Assalamu alaikum everyone. Uh, today we will uh, learn about chuck converter. So this is one of the uh, converter type that can be used uh, in both back and boost operation. So here is the uh, simple circuit diagram of the of the converter. So we have the input voltage is here and then we have a inductor L1 and then we have a capacitor here C this is called the coupling capacitor uh, sometimes I may refer it to CC in the short form of a coupling capacitor and then we have L2 or the second inductor and then we have a filter capacitor uh, near the uh, load and then here we have the load and we have a switch here now this can be either connected to position 1 or in position 2. Now unlike the uh, back uh, boost converter that we have covered in our previous lectures, here in the chuck converter uh, the energy storing element is the capacitor C, the coupling capacitor C. So this is basically uh, transferring the energy from the input uh, to the load. We will see it how it works. So when uh, the switch is connected to position number one at that time we have basically the input is connected uh, to L1 and it is short circuited here so L1 uh, so the current is flowing basically the input current is flowing through L1 and then it's coming to the negative terminal of the source and here uh, we have this uh, capacitor uh, which was recharged now in the steady state operation uh, don't consider the case in the, in the beginning of the uh, circuit when it's run so in the steady state condition the capacitor was charged so it will, it will basically discharge and then the current will flow like this so we'll have a current flow for the input it's like this and then for the second part the current flow is like this and the AC part of the current, uh, AC part of, of this current, if I denote it as, as I2, so the AC part of this I2 will flow through this capacitor and the DC part of this uh, I2 will flow through this resistance. Now from the current direction loop, if we define the output voltage polarity like this, then you can see that the output voltage polarity will be negative because the current is entering from the bottom of the circuit okay so this is the condition when uh, the switch is connected position number one and at that time vl1 or the uh, voltage drop across switch one is basically v in because we have vl1 like this this is our vl so the voltage across um, inductor L1 is the VL1 which is equals to V in, this is our V in, okay. And then um, for inductor L2, our VL2 or uh, this is the voltage across the inductor uh, VL2 which is equals to minus uh, VC minus V0. So the negative of the capacitor voltage, you can apply the uh, KVL versus voltage loop uh, to, to get the value of the uh, voltage across the inductor L2. Now, when the switch is connected to position number 2, at that time, you are basically charging uh, the capacitor. So on the left hand side, uh, this is the flow of the current. So you are basically charging the capacitor like this and then in the second part uh, you have uh, basically like this inductor so the current flows will continue to be like this and some part will obviously flow like this so in this particular case uh, the voltage drop across L1 is V in minus Vc so this is our Vc so if you apply KVL you get the voltage across inductor 1, VL1 is V in minus VC. For inductor 2, VL2 is basically the voltage uh, which is appearing across 
uh, first the output of the voltage if you, if you apply the, the KVL. So now, as we know uh, that we have uh, the voltage drop across the inductor, we know what is the voltage drop across both of these inductors uh, during the, these two states, uh, where, whether it's connected to switch one or, or whether it's connected to position number one or in position number two, uh, you know what's the voltage across the inductor. And then our obvious approach, the first approach that we are always following is to is to calculate the gain equation. That means the relationship between the output voltage and the input voltage. And to do that, uh, the equation that we are always using is the volt set balance equation, uh, which means that the integration of, of the inductor voltage over the whole time period is basically zero. So for the time when it is connected to position number one, during that time, our uh, this is for L1. So for considering uh, for inductor one, if you integrate voltage drop across inductor one for the whole time period, uh, that means from zero to T on, this equals to V in, and from T on to T, it's equals to V in minus Vc. So if you integrate it, so you have this integration, and if you uh, do the uh, algebraic manipulation, then you end up with the equation which relates uh, your V in and V C. That means you have a relationship between your capacitor voltage uh, V C and the input voltage V in with respect to the duty cycle like this. Now, once you know the relationship the voltage, you can write the relationship the current that should be the opposite of the of the uh, of, of the coefficient that you are multiplying here so that should be the opposite here so the inverse of it is 1 minus t so the ic is basically 1 minus t multiplied by i in so you have a relationship between vc and ic with respect to uh, respect to the input of the of the voltage and the current and then uh, if you use uh, the uh, the volt set balance equation for inductor 2 L2, then uh, for inductor 2, during the time from 0 to T on, we derive that uh, VL2 is basically minus VC minus V0. That means minus VC minus V0, and you integrate it from 0 to T on, plus uh, for the time uh, in, in stage 2, VL2 is minus V0. So you have minus v naught you integrate it from t on to t which is equals to zero and after uh, the algebraic manipulation you end up with another set of equations where the relationship is uh, between vc and the output voltage so you have a relationship between the uh, capacitor voltage and the output voltage and once you know the relationship between vc and v out you can calculate the relationship between IC and I, I out that should be the opposite of, of this part okay so now you have a in equation number one you have a relation between VC and V in and equation number two you have a relation between VC and V out so if you know uh, I mean uh, from equation one and two by the algebraic manipulation you end up with V out equation which is uh, basically like minus d divided by 1 minus d multiplied by v in so this is our gain equation so v out divided by v in uh, this is the gain or the voltage gain which can be uh, related or written like minus d divided by 1 minus d so this is the same uh, multiplying factor that you have seen in the Barclays converter that means when the d value is less than 0.5 at that time, uh, so let's say the d value is 0.2, so the numerator part is minus 0.2 and the denominator part is 1 minus 0.2, which is equals to 8. And that means the multiplying factor, uh, so this is 0.8, so this is uh, operating as a back converter when uh, you have a uh, duty cycle less than 0.5, that means it's a step down operation. But if you change this duty cycle, to more than 0.5, uh, let's say this is 0.6, so in the numerator you have minus 0.6 now, and in the denominator part you have 0.4, that means it is now using 
it can be now used as a stepping up operation of the voltage output voltage can be increased um, than the input voltage and the current equation that will be the opposite of this uh, this factor here because the multiplication of the uh, output current and the output voltage should be the same as the input voltage and the input current considering that if you consider uh, all the circuit parameters as ideal that means there is no loss if there is no loss that means the uh, output power should be equal to the input power and that also says that the current uh, should be the coefficient here should be the opposite of, of the voltage coefficients so how the circuit is is built uh, uh, this is the example of how it is built in in real life so we have the input voltage here p in and then we have the inductor l1 now this uh, switches on uh, these two two position can be replaced by a transistor and a diode if you place it like this so whenever uh, we are giving a gate pulse in the in the in, in, in this uh, in this switch it can be mosfet it can be transistor uh, so whenever we are giving the gate pulse here so whenever this mosfet is on that means that uh, your, your current is flowing like this and then uh, this on means that this diode is, is, is basically reversed bias so this diode is reversed bias because you have a uh, you have basically uh, whenever because this is short circuited so this diode is, is reversed bias that means this positive terminal here comes here so this positive of the capacitor so this is connected here that means the cathode of the diode is uh, has more potential than the anode that means this um, diode is reverse bias so on the right hand side your circuit is like this which is exactly the same uh, from the uh, fundamental circuit diagram as, as shown here in the second stage uh, when this transistor is, uh, is turned off at that time this part is basically open so this part is basically open at that time this diode is forward biased so the diode is conducting and this is uh, identical to the position when the uh, to second position of the, of the circuit operation so now you have the current flow like this so this is the same as this part so this is how it's it's built in a in a uh, real environment so i have uh, built a very simple simulink model here as you can see uh, this represents uh, the chuck converter so you can play with this model you can add uh, current uh, current measurements here you can simply copy it for example if you want to see what's the current flowing through this l1 you can copy this current sensor and then paste it here and then uh, add this current measurement like this so if you replace this and then you add the unit here and then you can see the output for for instance you can increase the number of input in this scope then simply double click here and then go to the settings you can give number of input as five and then let's say this is our il2 you can write this is i l2 so like this uh, where you can uh, you can add voltage and current probes here to see uh, what's the wave shape of the voltage and current that look like so if we run the circuit then we will be able to uh, able to see uh, whether it's a, it's a buck operation or a, or a boost operation so in this particular case uh, our duty cycle was uh, i mean uh, the d value was 0 0.6 that means that it should be a stepping up operation our input is 10 uh, 100 volt that means the output 
should be more than 100 volts. And if you see uh, in the output, uh, then you can see that. Uh, so this is the output here. So it's here. And you can see clearly that the uh, this green line is basically the output voltage which is first of all negative value and the input was 100 volt positive value so the output is 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 is, is uh, in the opposite direction output voltage and it is uh, more than the the magnitude of the output voltage is more than the input voltage and this uh, red line is the output current is uh, uh, the inductor current this uh, il2 so this is the uh, inductor current il2 Okay. Okay, and then uh, this is the gate pulse in the top here. You can see that uh, this is the time when the gate pulse is off, and this is the time when you have uh, one in the gate pulse. That means the transistor is on at that time, and during this time the transistor is off. Now, when the t uh, during the time when the transistor is basically on, the inductor current will start increase because the inductor is. Um, storing the energy so the inductor current should increase at that time so whenever your transistor is on at that time your inductor current is, is rising and after that so this is the IL1 so this is the inductor current through through the inductor 1 which is defined as IL1 and when uh, your transistor is off at that time so whenever your transistor is off at that time this inductor and this uh, input source both of them is, is, is energizing this capacitor here. So at during that time, this inductor current should drop, as you can see from here, it's, it's going down. Okay, and uh, in case of the capacitor current, uh, now the capacitor current, uh, if, you, if, you, if you look at here, then uh, for some time the capacitor current is flowing like this, that means uh, for the for the time when this switch is turned on, uh, when this transistor is turned on, during that time the capacitor is discharging, and for the other phase the capacitor is charging basically. So the capacitor current is the I coupling capacitor. So for certain time you have a positive uh, I coupling capacitor, and for certain time it is uh, this negative. It is basically discharging. Okay, and this inductor current is uh, is basically the uh, the same as the uh, capacitor current for the time when this uh, capacitor and inductor is connected. And that means in the second phase, this uh, I L two is the same as the capacitor current, and you can consequently derive. Uh, so once you get this inductor current, the AC part of the inductor current will flow through the uh, filter capacitor and the DC part will flow through the, through the load and you can also using the same technique you can uh, find out what's the current wave shape what should be the current wave shape through this diode because for the case when uh, when this switch is, is turned on for the time when the switch is turned on that means whenever you, you are having a current conduction like this when the switch is turned on, this diode is reverse bias. That means during that time, the current through the diode should be zero. And whenever your switch is turned off, at that time your uh, your diode is actually flowing. That uh, during that time, current in the across the diode should be. So you have this you know, current one is charging like this, and the other is flowing like this. So from this you can calculate uh, the current that is flowing through the diode. Okay, so if you look at the transistor current, so for the time uh, when the uh, for, for the time when the switch is on, during that time you are you are having a transistor current, and when uh, this when this uh, gate pulse is off, at that time the transistor current is basically zero and uh, 
the other one is the is, is, uh, is the IC or the so this 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 part is the IC part of the uh, filter capacitor current that is flowing here. Okay, so yeah, so our next task is to calculate what's the uh, minimum value of this L1 and L2. So these are the circuit parameters. So we need to calculate what's the value, what should be the value of this L1, L2, C coupling and C uh, filter. So we have to, we need to derive the equations and uh, in, the, in the numerical problems we need to calculate what should be the value, what should be the minimum value of this inductor in order to have a continuous current operation. So as you look into the inductor uh, current wave shapes, so if you look into the inductor current wave shapes, then you see that the inductor current is basically, uh, for certain time, it's going up uh, when the switch is turned on. So that means during the on duration of the switch, your inductor current is rising, and during the off duration, the inductor current is falling. Uh, so based on these, so you can uh, you can derive what's the maximum value of this inductor current L1 max. So uh, the maximum inductor current in the inductor one is basically the DC part of this inductor current. That means uh, the DC part is, is somewhere here. So the DC part of the inductor current plus this uh, half of this delta uh, or peak to peak value of this inductor current. So that means this DC part here and then half of this DC part. So this uh, comes again from the slope equation. So this is the slope which comes from LDIDT uh, formula because if you look at here, so uh, if, if, if you look at here, so the current, uh, so it's LDIDT is the voltage across the inductor or VL. So from here you can get the DI part. So the DI part is, 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 is basically uh, VL. So DI can be written as VL divided by L multiplied by DT like this. So this VL is the same as V in during this time. So the slope is V in divided by L1. So this is the slope multiplied by uh, the time duration. So the time duration in the on time. Uh, so T on, you can write T on as DT cycle D multiplied by T. So that is what is written. So you have done uh, the similar, you have followed the similar approach in, uh, in the PBS converter uh, derivations. So once you know IL1 max, you can find IL1 minimum, which should be the uh, negative of it here, because now we have the DC component of the IL1 minus the half of the uh, peak to peak value of the inductor current. Now during the, uh, during the continuous operation for minimum value of IL1, uh, at the boundary, this minimum IL value should be zero. So now we, we say that this part should be zero. So you write zero is equals to uh, this. And then from here, uh, you calculate a relationship between the, uh, between the input I in. So you replace I L with I in because I L and I in for that time is the same. So you replace I L one with I in, and you previously you calculated the relation between I in and uh, I out with duty cycle. So you replace I in with uh, relationship with I out and duty cycle. You replace V in with V out and duty cycle here, and then uh, you, uh, you you do the manipulation, and you end up with, uh, with L one mean equation, which says that. Uh, L1 mean should be this value. To calculate uh, L2 mean, you follow the basically the same approach. The only difference here is that uh, now this slope is linked with the uh, output voltage. 
and this is corresponds to the off time of the transistor and the off time is basically t off which can be also written as 1 minus d multiplied by t so this is the off time and uh, during that time the slope of the il2 is v out divided by l2 so if you look at uh, look at here so your v l2 is uh, v out basically the amplitude is v out so the slope is this comes from here so il2 minimum should be the dc component of il2 minus half of the peak to peak value of the il2 which can be written as half of v out divided by l2 multiplied by the t off time which can be written as 1 minus t multiplied by t so during the uh, at the boundary of this continuous in this continuous operation this value should be zero so you write zero and then il2 can be written as i out uh, during the off time so during the off time il2 can be written as i out and uh, you have v out here and i out can be written as v out divided by r so from there you have uh, the relationship of l2 mean so what should be the minimum value of the inductor okay and then uh, then we need to derive what should be the value of the coupling capacitor that means uh, this c value uh, so whenever we are calculating the c values we follow the approach of the of the of the uh, ripple factor so how should be the voltage ripples uh, here and how, what should be the voltage ripples in the output so the voltage ripples in the output that basically uh, is defined by the uh, filter capacitor and the voltage ripple uh, here in the coupling capacity that will define the value of the c okay so the smaller the value of the c uh, the faster it will discharge the, so the faster this uh, stored energy in the capacitor will be uh, discharged that means that you will have higher ripple now we need to calculate what should be the minimum value of this uh, capacitor in this case this coupling capacitor what should be this value in order to have a certain ripple factor now for the output uh, output uh, ripple output voltage ripple normally that is kept uh, at a very minimum level uh, typically 0.1 percent or in some cases it can be one percent so it's very small whereas there is uh, no definite uh, requirement that it should be uh, very small here the ripple in the coupling capacitor is not recommended to have uh, extremely small because if you if your ripple is very very small that means you need to have a very big capacitor here as the coupling capacitor uh, on the other hand this ripple is not important because we are focusing on the uh, on the output voltage should be fixed uh, so the so the voltage ripple in the coupling capacitor that will uh, not be a very big issue and typically in the in the design it's kept uh, around 10 20 30 percent so in that in that cases if you are told to have a certain percentage of the voltage ripple in the in the coupling capacitor uh, if, if the ripple factor is higher that means you can basically have a lower value of the capacitance that means you can reduce the cost and also the size of the converter now we'll see how to calculate this uh, capacitor value so our ic or the uh, current in the uh, this capacitor coupling capacitor current is basically like this so in one case when this capacitor is basically charging so during the time when it is charging at that time and the capacitor current is basically the same as il1 so this part is the same as il1 and when this capacitor current is basically discharging at that time uh, the capacitor current is, is the opposite direction and it's uh, it's the same as il2 so this is the uh, whenever the capacitor current so in the, in the position number one if you can recall from the beginning of the slide so in the position number one uh, you have operation like this so in the position number one the capacitor is discharging like this the capacitor current should be the same as il2 okay so uh, now this opposite part this comes from the from the direction of the current flow so if you, if you assume uh, 
like this then this uh, style will to be like this so yeah so uh, the average value of this il2 or the dc part of this il2 is basically i out and the dc part of this il1 is basically i in so from either of these two relationships so if you consider uh, this part of this uh, of this uh, of the stored charge in the capacitor or from this this part from either of this equation or either of this part you can basically derive the relationship um, between the capacitor value and the ripple factor so this dq or the amount of um, charge that is uh, stored here is basically so you can you can take the dc part here and as we know that uh, this small triangle and this small triangle are identical so if you swap these two so basically the amount of charge that is stored here is i naught because this is the output current so i naught multiplied by the uh, by the time when this switch is on so the switch is on can be written as t on which can be also written as dt and at that time the uh, current here is the same as the output current so it's i naught dt which can be written as v out divided by r d multiplied by 1 over f which is replacing t with 1 over the switching frequency so this coupling capacitor c uh, should be uh, higher than this uh, this value and normally uh, this v out divided by dvc or this is the inverse of the ripple factor uh, this is typically this ripple content is around 10 to 20 percent of the output voltage okay uh, finally uh, we need to know what should be the value of the filter capacitor or c out uh, and then uh, to do that our our approach is what is the current actually flowing through the capacitor current first we need to know what's the capacitor current so the capacitor current is basically the uh, ac component of the il2 so if we know the il2 so this is our il2 and uh, the, the dc part of the il2 is basically the output current here the il2 has two parts one is the dc and the other is the ac part the dc part close to the resistance and the ac part close to the capacitor the ac part means that is, is the is the ripple part of the uh, il2 that will flow through the capacitor so ic should be the ripple part of the il2 so ic can be written like this and then our next uh, uh, approach is to is to calculate the area of this shaded part and so this is the amount of charge that is uh, transferring so for certain time uh, we have a charge transferred here and then the other part in this direction so you can again calculate either of this area of this, this triangle and to calculate the area here so this part uh, so you have done this uh, calculation the previous converters uh, so this part is basically t by 2 so you have t by 2 here so half uh, t by 2 half is the is for the area of the triangle so it's half t by 2 is the base and then the height is uh, basically uh, half of the ripple peak to peak value so half of this delta il2 and after the uh, algebraic manipulation replacing t with the switching frequency f and then uh, uh, and uh, replacing with this delta il2 with the output voltage and the inductor value that means the slope and the time when the duration when it is off at that time you can define as 1 minus d multiplied by t so from this relationship you end up with a ripple factor like this so from this ripple factor normally this dv uh, by v naught this value is kept as 0.1 percent or if the specification says it's one percent then you can you know what should be the value of dv by v naught and then your task is to calculate what's the value of c but prior to that you should of course calculate the minimum value of l2 so again if you you see the approach every time first we are 
calculating what's the duty cycle. So the first thing is the duty cycle. And the duty cycle is always related to the input voltage and the output voltage. So, so you may ask to design a converter and in, in, in that cases you will be said uh, what should be the input voltage and what should be the output voltage. So you know the input voltage and output voltage. From there you can calculate the value of the D. So that is the first step which you follow every time. And then your next uh, design approach is to calculate the value of the L. So the value of the L for continuous current operation, you, you can calculate the value of the L uh, from, the, from these equations. So you can calculate the value of the L or once you, uh, you, if you, if you understand the operation of the circuit, uh, if, you, if you think a bit closely, then you can, you can see that uh, for certain time, for example, whenever you are calculating the L1 value, so L1 is linked to it. Uh, input current or L1 is linked with V in and L2 is linked with output current or is linked with V out. So by, uh, by considering these, uh, these parts, you can basically calculate what should be the value of L1 and L2. And once you have the value of L1 and L2, then you can calculate the value of the C or the capacitor. Okay, so that's the end. Uh, of, of today's lecture I will also also post this uh, simulink file you can play with the simulink file uh, you can check with the theory part uh, whether whether, uh, whether you understand the theory part well or not you can play with this simulink file to have a much better understanding about the uh, about the about the theory of this, this subject so with this I would like to conclude today's session if you have any question uh, we will Post address it in the, address it in the discussion class. Thank you very much.